the initial weight is measured soon after birth. The weight will be recorded in grams or in some facilities in hundredths of a pound. Use of these methods allows small gains and losses to be noted more accurately. The surface of the scale may be cold, so covering it with a blanket or towel before balancing or zeroing it will protect the infant from unnecessary cold stress. Normal weight for term newborns, that is any baby born at 37 to 42 weeks gestation, has a range of 2,600 to 4,000 grams or 5 pounds 12 ounces to 8 pounds 13 ounces. Many variables can affect where a baby falls in this range, including race, gender, genetic characteristics such as physical size of the mother and father, and prenatal course. It is good practice to have a conversion scale immediately available for parents who want to know the weight in pounds and ounces. The infant's length is measured using a disposable measuring tape. Length is measured from crown to heel. Since term newborns flex their extremities when at rest, it is important to gently straighten the legs to get an accurate measurement. The typical newborn is 48 to 53 centimeters or 19 to 21 inches in length, but again, factors such as genetic predisposition can cause normal variations. Next, the head and chest circumference are measured. With the baby lying on his back, wrap the measuring tape around the head so it rests just above the ears and eyebrows and around the occipital bulge. On average, this will measure 33 to 38 centimeters or 13 to 15 inches. Head circumference should be rechecked one to two days after delivery when the molding has resolved. This will provide a more accurate measurement. The chest circumference is measured at the nipple line and is normally about 2 to 3 centimeters smaller than the head. However, during the first 24 to 48 hours while cranial molding is present, these two measurements may be approximately the same. The abdominal circumference is measured just below the umbilicus. The abdomen is normally rounded and somewhat protuberant with a measurement approximately equal to that of the head. All measurements are plotted on a newborn graph and compared to the averages indicated. Symmetry should be present. In other words, the length, weight, head, and abdominal circumferences should all fall in roughly the same percentile. When visualizing the trunk, gently palpate the clavicle or collarbone and observe the infant for symmetry and in arm movement because sometimes the clavicle will fracture during delivery. This is more common in larger babies. Often the break cannot be palpated, but it is painful and the infant should be handled carefully. If the infant holds one arm close to the side of his body or cries when the arm is manipulated, it is possible that fracture has occurred. The diagnosis will be confirmed by x-ray. It will heal over the first few weeks of life and a small lump may form as this occurs. Occasionally it is necessary to immobilize the affected arm for a period of time. Next, visualize the nipples and palpate the nipple bud for size. Infants may exude small drops of breast milk, sometimes called witch's milk. This is caused by maternal hormones and is normal in infants of both sexes. Nipple bud size is a factor in determining gestational age and will be fully discussed later.